Hello. What we're going to look at here in the first of these programs about foundational concepts of economics is the concept of scarcity. Now, what you could say is that scarcity is perhaps the ultimate foundational concept of economics. In many ways, you can say that the whole discipline of economics is based upon working out the implications of the insight that resources are scarce, that we live in a world of scarcity. We can think of this as being a binding constraint upon the existence of all human beings in all times and all places. We all live in a world of scarcity. The way we live, the range of things that are possible for us are always finally and ultimately constrained or limited by that reality. And you could say, in fact, that, as I said a moment ago, most of what economists do is working out the implications of the simple statement, resources are scarce. Now, this is one of those ideas or insights that economists come to grasp almost intuitively, but which many non-economists have trouble with and find problems understanding. One of the main reasons for this is that the very word scarcity is used in a different sense by the technical economists uh, to the way in which it's used in normal everyday speech. For most people in everyday speech, scarcity means rarity. To say that something is scarce is to say that, objectively, there isn't a lot of it. Uh, if there is a lot of something, then we would not generally say that it's scarce. Now, that is not what the term means in economics. In economics, pretty much everything is scarce, uh, even when there may be very, very large amounts of it. Uh, scarcity, in other words, does not refer to the absolute quality uh, or quantity of a thing. Uh, it refers rather to something more existential. The opposite of scarcity is abundance, and there are only a very few things in this world, if any, that can be truly said to be abundant. Now, what then is scarcity? Well, the key thing that you can say about something that is scarce is firstly, that it takes effort to acquire it and to make it useful. A resource uh, is something that human beings can employ uh, to make their life better uh, or to actually just maintain their life. Uh, it's a substance or product or uh, commodity, if you will, part of the natural world, which we can use in one way or another. But in order to use it, you have to expend time and effort. And that is what makes it scarce in the first instance. Because time is the ultimate scarce resource. Uh, there is only so much time available to you, you can't reuse it, uh, and there are no more, there's no way you can get any more time than there actually is. So time is finite in a way that almost nothing else is really. Now, the other thing about scarce resources is that as well as requiring work to acquire them and make them useful, uh, they exist in a finite quantity. Uh, that is to say, even though they may exist in a very, very large amount, there's still ultimately a limit. It's still not infinite. Now, you can imagine perhaps what uh, this means by envisaging what an abundant world would look like. In an abundant world, you would have so much stuff around, there would be such infinite quantities of uh, material that you would not have to expend any effort to get them or to use them. And no matter how much you used, there'd always be still as much left over as there was before because the amount is effectively infinite. Now, this has been envisaged by science fiction writers, such as notably the late Ian M. Banks in his culture novels, which give you a good idea of what a world of abundance might be like, but it's not the world that human beings actually live in. We do not live in a world that has those qualities. Now, this is something that economists have always been aware of. Uh, the late Lionel Robbins, uh, in his book, The Ultimate Foundations of Economic Science, defined economics as being the study of the means by which scarce resources are allocated between infinite ends. And this is in fact a definition that most economists would accept. It's a very good working definition of what the subject matter of economics is.
the allocation of scarce resources among potentially infinite ends. Now, if confronted with this definition, though, many lay people uh, scratch their heads and can't understand what the problem is. Uh, their response is to say, well, OK, use less. Uh, if the problem is that you have finite resources, but your ends are infinite, then cut your ends back. Don't use so much. Don't be so greedy. Suppose you have 100 acres of land and you're using all of it. You could say, obviously, in that case, the land is a scarce resource. But one response might be, well, don't use so much. Make do with less. Only use 20 acres of land rather than the 100. That way you've solved the problem of scarcity. But actually, from the economist's point of view, no, you haven't. Because what Lionel Robbins meant and what economists in general mean when they say that human needs are infinite potentially is not that human beings want to consume an unlimited amount of stuff. What they mean is that there are many, many different uses to which resources can be put. And those different uses are infinite in number because each individual human being will have their own particular idea about how the resources should be used, remembering that those resources are ultimately finite and also uh, take effort to acquire. And in addition, each individual human being, as well as having their own preferred use for the resources, will have many, many alternative uses. So let's think about that 100 acres of land again and assume this time that you're only using 20 acres of the 100. What do you use that 20 acres for? There's an almost infinite number of possible uses or combinations of uses to which that 20 acres could be put. You could use it for hospital. You could use it for housing. You could use it for farming. You could use it for a leisure park. Uh, now, given that in this particular abstract model, there's only ultimately 100 acres of land available, you can see how the number of possible combinations and uses of just that 100 acres is actually infinite. That is what is meant by saying that you have a finite, limited, therefore scarce resource, which can be allocated in an infinite variety of different ways. And that is what Ronald Robbins was talking about in his definition of what economists are concerned with. Now, the real point that comes from this is that you have to have a means of allocating those resources between different competing ends. Given that resources are scarce, what follows from that is that you have to find out how to decide which combination of uses those resources should be applied for, uh, given, as I say, that it takes time and effort to get them and they don't exist in infinite quantities, even in large ones. Now, there are a number of ways in which you can do this. You could appoint a dictator and the dictator would decide how the land or any other resource is used and allocated between different ends. The allocation would then reflect that particular individual's preferences. Uh, this has the advantage of being simple and straightforward, but it means that everybody else, uh, their preferences are not recognized. The second way of doing it is to have a discussion, a discursive procedure, politics, if you like, voting, discussion, argument, debate, and ultimately people uh, casting votes or holding their hands up. This, again, is a way that can be used, and it often is used, but as we shall see later on in this series, it also has problems. The third way, which is the way that economists are interested in, is to use free interaction and exchange uh, using things like the price mechanism to work out what the way of allocating those scarce resources is that will leave most people better off. In other words, it will maximize the well-being of the population as a whole. If we lived in a world of abundance, the world of e &M Banks culture civilization, we wouldn't need to do this because it would take no work and effectively no time even uh, to access resources because there would be an unlimited amount of them. But that, of course, is not the world in which we live. And it's the reality that we live in a world of scarcity that is at the foundation or starting point of economics.